Hello, everybody, and welcome to Petty's Reserve for this MPL Men's Victoria Clash. It's round nine back out here in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne as Manningham United welcome Melbourne Knights for this huge clash today. The Doherty Cup break is over and league action is back. And Manningham back at the site of an incredible upset a few weeks ago against the reigning champions, Avondale. Welcome Melbourne Knights to town, looking to get back on the winner's list after two losses in a row in all competitions. Nick Dubano and Mark Ivkovic here to take you through all the action in this 3pm kickoff. Mark, it's good to be back. Good to have some league football back. Yeah, good afternoon, Nick. Definitely. It was uh, sorely missed last week, um, but yeah, back in action, like you said, and uh, crack a game this afternoon. Big game for, for both sides. Manningham, if they can win today, they'll uh, actually jump Knights on the table and be three points outside the top six. Well, of course, for Melbourne Knights, if they are to get a win, they will cut the gap to only a point behind Dandenong City and Port Melbourne, who are both reside in 6th and 7th. But as you mentioned, Mark, Manningham could go as high as 8th on the ladder if all results go their way, including Dandenong Thunder not coming away with a win or a draw tonight. We'll take you through the starting lineups in just a second as both teams back in action. Melbourne Knights losing in the Doherty Cup. 2-0 against South Melbourne at Knights Stadium, while Manningham, 3-0 winners against Mooney Ponds United from State League 3 to book their place in the next round of the Cup. For Manningham, there's one change from the side that lost in the, in the league against St Albans a fortnight ago. Daniel Scopoletti is out. Coming into the starting lineup is Nicholas Volgaris. While for Melbourne Knights, quite a settled 11, but sticking with, without... This week, Joseph Franjic and Mitch Hoare. Mitch Hoare out with suspension. Ivan Franjic, of course, served his suspension from their 5-2 loss against Hume City. And he's back in the side today. As we get underway here at Petty's Reserve, Melbourne Knights in their red kits kicking from left to right, while Manningham in their right kits from right to left. And Manningham already doing some early attacking. It's a great ball through and a chance for Harding, and it's a good save by Oldfield. And immediately Knights under pressure as Georgopoulos floats the ball back into the area and Chris Oldfield collects and we could barely catch our breath there, Mark, as Manningham already putting this Knights defence under pressure. Wow, Nick, what a start to the game for Manningham. It's a massive chance for Rob Harding. Really should have put that away and um, put Manningham 1-0 up. Jesus, a big, big chance. So that would have... Um, Knights' heads would have dropped immediately after considering the performance in the last league game against Hume where they conceded five pretty soft goals, to be honest. So rounding out that starting lineup for Melbourne Knights, Oldfield in goals. Number two, Ben Carrigan. Four, Corey Sewell. Number five, Ivan Franjic. Steve White, Kieran Bramwell, Gian Albano, Jack Morton, Tom Werndl, Safe Saki and Tommy Semi. While for Manningham, George Zamoranis in goals today with Dower Cole, Alex Castiello, Marco Tavella and Nick Volgaris as part of that back four. Then in midfield, Junior Carter, Yardis Georgopoulos and Christos Theodorakopoulos. The semis ball into the area, collected by Zamoranis with ease. Playing a bit further up, Jose Ramirez, Ben Everson and Robert Harding, who comes into this game in some good form with two goals in his last two games in the league, scoring against Avondale and St Albans. Well, Mark, we've seen Manningham now seven games in the top flight of Victorian football. They have been... Very good at home. They have caused some surprises. Two wins against Dandenong Thunder and a thrashing of Avondale 3-0 and a, a spirited loss against South Melbourne, to say the least. But what have you made of Manningham, the top flight, to start this season? Look, they've been um, more than competitive, Nick. You know, they've put together a, a decent side to, to come up in the league, it's, you know, bringing players like uh, Theodore Coppolis across. Ben Everson, you know, is probably overdue to play in, in, at this level of football in Victoria. So it's a, it's a solid side with, with a lot of experience. You know, I looked at their average age of their, their squad is uh, 28 years old. So that's, you know, probably a, a very good age for a team that's come up into the top flight. Um, and look, I, I haven't been here before. It's my first time at Petty's Reserve. And you can see why it's an advantage for Manningham. Very small pitch. Doesn't come across that way on, on the camera. It's... It's tiny, and um, look, it's probably not one of the best synthetic services going around. The actual um, mixture of it, it's very grainy, as you can see when the when the ball bounces, it kind of stops and holds up a bit. So, you know, a lot of teams coming here are going to find it very, very hard to play, as Knights have already um, experienced that in the first 15 seconds. Here is Harding again. Whips it across the face. Everson, great first touch, feeds it to Ramirez, and it's cleared away by Werndl. Tavella with a heavy touch is... 
Take it away from him by Saki. You did mention it, Mark, playing on this synthetic pitch. I guess from a coaching perspective, how do you prepare to play on synthetic? Because, I mean, it, it, it is a distinct advantage that Manningham have and any side in Victorian football that, that may have in this league. We see how good Bolin are at home just up the road at the Venetor Club. But we'll come back to that in just a sec as Knights breaking forward down this left through Albano. Driving forward there, John Albano. Still going. Corralled by Castiello. Feeds it to White. In some space, he hits it. And it's just over the bar there from Steve White. But back to previous question there, Mark. How do you prepare to play on a pitch like this? For me, for if, if it was me coaching the side, I would uh, hire out a synthetic pitch for the week and, and train on that leading up to to playing Manningham because, like, like I said, it's a very obviously it's a very different surface, especially to Knight Stadium. Um, the dimensions of the pitch... Um, you know, I think teams probably underestimate the advantage that Manningham do have here, and it's been proven. You know, the start they had against South Melbourne um, in, in that game, you know, a little bit more composure. They could have seen that game out, um, but they let South back into the game and, and ended up losing quite convincingly. And then you know, beating Avondale three nil, not many sides can make mm-hmm. claim to that. So, obviously, there's there's a, a big advantage here. So you need to prepare properly for it. So Robert Harding just receiving some treatment there after a bit of a stronger challenge a little bit earlier. Been a fast start for Harding, who made the move from Altona Magic in the off season. Shown a lot early, but it took a while for him to open up his account. But once he did against Avondale, since then the the goals have started flowing for the Altona, sorry, the Manningham number eleven on the bench for Manningham today. James Tuntus, Owen Dufton, Reese Dufton, Tom Golding, Ali Turgot, and backup goalkeeper. Claudio Sicora. So should Harding be forced off? They do have an array of options. Here is Tommy Semi. Hopped on its way by White. And a free kick awarded there by referee Ross Clark against Junior Carter. Knights looking to get play moving quickly through Sewell. Here is Saki. Semi, first time ball out to Sewell. Conversely for Melbourne Knights, Mark, we saw them end their finals drought last year. It's been a bit of an up and down, inconsistent start to this season. Come back to that in just a sec till this attack plays out. But here is Saki. As well to his way around Theodore Coppolis. A Cole got a foot to it. George Opolis helping him, it's on its way and he's done enough there to win the goal kick but for Melbourne Knights Mark I mean it's been a an interesting start to this year a, a few games winless actually they didn't go with, they didn't win any of their first three games they sort of turned things around in that three all draw against Avondale and then last week a, a really disappointing loss or last round against Hume City but what what do you make of this inconsistent start under Ben Suri? Uh, a couple of things Josh Phelps departing the club I think it's been a, a, a big key factor. Ball over the top for Albano. And he just puts it over. It's a great ball in from White. Albano has sat up well for him, but just didn't get his body over it. Yeah, Josh, Josh Phelps' departure has been a, a huge loss. Um, and Ben Collins as well, really. You know, they were the heartbeat of defence. And you know, the Knights were so good defensively last year. Um, and then obviously the departure of Ben Khan can't be underestimated either. Mm. And Ben Siri's a... A novice coach, really. It's his first um, full season in charge, and you know you can't replace someone like Ben Khan, who you know is one of the best coaches in Australia. So um, it's a tough task for Ben Siri to come in and try and replicate that style of football. You know they've made some tweaks to it, and then you lose two big players like that as well. It's been tough work for the Knights. Well, flown over the top there from Ivan Franjic, Castiello getting across and wins the goal kick. Well played there by the veteran centre half. It was an interesting patch for Melbourne Knights before that loss against Hume. They beat St Albans 3-0 at home. They surrendered a two-goal advantage against Dandenong City and beat Moreland City 1-0. It seemed like they were starting to find their feet a little bit, but as you mentioned, it, there are some key players that they have that have departed in the off-season. And as well, Mohamed Sumayoro, we haven't seen yet this season. There was a, a chance he was going to be playing today, I guess, if you go by Sports TG and you, you, you check the, the, I guess, preliminary team list. He was named, but... Still recovering from injury. Yeah, I think some of those results have glossed over the poor performances, though. That even the Moreland City game, 
probably very lucky to win that game. Mm. Um, you know, Jacob Wiseman came in for Chris Oldfield that day and, and played uh, blinder as the man of the match, and you know, Knights got away with a one-nil win, and and that three-all draw against Savendale really, you know, Knights had no reason to get back into that mm. game. You know, it's just a, a freak event. So you know, there's been some pretty disappointing performances so far this season, and. They haven't really clicked into gear, so they'll, you know, they need three points desperately, and and today's a good opportunity to kickstart this season. Theodore Coppolis helping it forward towards Everson, but he's out of bounds there for a throw into Melbourne Knights. Ben Everson, as you mentioned, Mark, it seems like a an overdue opportunity in the top tier of Victorian football. He's been tearing it up in MPL two, or now known as VPL one, for quite some time with. Likes of Dandy City, Bulleen, short stint at Brunswick Juventus, and last year helping Manningham get promoted with that incredible run that he went on a semi. Saki feeds it centrally. Sewell, who's tucked in in that inverted fullback role. Werndl hits it from range and straight into the palms there of George Zamoranis, who collects that one with ease. Interesting to see how semi goes today. We know he likes to use his pace to um, get him behind, but there's not much room on this pitch to, to utilise that pace, so he's going to have to rely on his, uh, his strength, which he's also good at, but it's, uh, yeah. yeah, you're going to have to really adapt the way you play when you come to Petty's Reserve, because you, it's just a very, very tight tight ground. Well, his task is going up against Marco Tavella, who has shifted over to left back. He nominal the starting right back over the last few weeks, with Daniel Scopoletti missing. He's Shifted over to the left, Nick Volgaris to right back. Georgeopoulos, Theodorakopoulos, finds Harding, and touch was a little bit heavy. It's cleared away. Marco Tavella was very good here the last time these two teams, well, last time, sorry, Manningham were here against Avondale. He had the, the task of going up against the likes of Kirk Herr and Stefan Zinni, primarily Zinni, and he held his own brilliantly in that game. In fact, he, he earned Team of the Week honours for his performance, both him and George Zamoranis were particularly impressive in that 3-0 win as he's Volgaris in some space to cross, whips it in, not a bad ball towards Theodore Coppola, he gets his head to it, and Chris Oldfield didn't know much about it, and Melbourne Knights can now clear, but again, danger signs for that Knights defence where Manningham get forward. Another big opportunity for Manningham, you know, it's, um, they're going to have to take their chances though, because you know, so early in the game when you're getting these opportunities... If you, if you don't hit the back of the net and put that scoreboard pressure, it is a wake-up call for, for your opponent and they can uh, quickly just go up the other end and um, steal that momentum. Theodore Coppolis in some very good form to start his tenure here at Manningham. Scored a double against Danny Nong Thunder and added another in there. Loss against Green Gully, but I'll tell you what, beauty of the cup coming in at the right time and the rules changing that allows players to serve their league bans in the cup. So he was able to serve that one game suspension that he accumulated in by being sent off against St Albans, against Mooney Ponds, and he's all good to go today. And similarly for Melbourne Knights with Ivan Franjic able to serve his ban against South Melbourne and get back in time for this one. Harding. Semi getting back and supporting Corey Sewell. Saki feeds it over the top for Bramwell. Good hold up play there from the former Perth Glory striker. Feeds it centrally to Sewell. He's semi in some space. Out now to Albano. Albano gets it onto his left and his effort was always rising and it's out for a goal kick. So both teams having a few opportunities to start this game. They're probably Manningham having the better of the opportunities even though Melbourne Knights have got the ball in some good areas. Yeah, well, that, that Harding opportunity should have been 1-0. But even Albano's opportunity not long ago should have found the back of the net. But uh, interesting to see that Ben suri has gone with um, Corey Sewell moving into that inverted fullback role. They kind of shot away from it the last uh, few weeks. We saw how successful it was last season. You know, Corey was unbelievable for the Knights. He's Harding again on the inside of Sewell. Carrigan gets across and... The tails the attack there of Manningham. You know, Rob Harding's got all that speed. They're going to have to be wary of that, especially when the likes of Everson drop a bit deeper and it creates a little bit more space for him. Theodore Acopolis Carter, nice flick to Ramirez. Not a bad effort from Jose Ramirez. But just goes wide of the mark. 
Jeez, I would have been up there for goal of the week if that went in, Nick. Some uh, nice interchange play there before Ramirez let loose. We have seen some cracking goals already here at Petty's Reserve this season. When you think back to Birkin Kurdar back in, in round two, scored a, a free kick here for Dandenong Thunder against Manningham at that end of the ground against South Melbourne. Ben Everson, cracking goal at that end of the ground from inside his own half. And then against Avondale, it actually was Jose Ramirez who scored a very nice team goal. So that end of the ground seems like it's if you're going to score a cracker, Mark, it's, it's, it's that end. Yeah, it must be the... Uh Victoria Container Deposit Scheme uh, <laughs> little uh, thing there that they're aiming for. Must think that uh, when they score, they get 10 cents per goal. <laughs> <laughs> the lines out there before the game, I've noticed this season, they're always quite long. People coming in and, and doing their recycling before the game, almost killing two birds with one stone, it seems. Clark getting in the way of that pass. No drop ball, actually. No, Ross Clark does stop it in the end. That's the one interesting move in, in the Knights lineup today is uh, Jack Morton moving into midfield with uh, Mitch Hoare out after after getting sent off against South Melbourne in the Cup. With uh, Anthony Drizzell still sitting on the bench, you would expect Drizzell to come into the midfield. Um, you know, just the combination between him and Steve White is one of the best in the competition, so... Jack Morton coming in instead of Giuseppe is, um, is an interesting one. On the bench today for Melbourne Knights is, as you mentioned, Anthony Giselle with the likes of Thomas Karlovich, John Mabok, Felipe Sanchez, Jacob Wiseman, and got a youngster in the team as well by the name of Juan Garcia Pulidio. He's been in the squad twice this season, but now for the third time, he's amongst the substitutes today. Might see him at some point as the game wears on. No Mitch Hoare, no Mohamed Sumayoro or Joseph Franjic in the squad today as Knights player down behind play. It is Gian Albano on that far side, just receiving some treatment. So still nil-nil just after 15 minutes here at Petty's Reserve. Both teams having some chances early, perhaps the best of those falling to the Blues inside the opening minutes when Rob Harding found himself in behind but was unable to give Manningham the lead. The Knights have had a couple chances of their own. John Albano in particular having a good chance that came to him a little bit earlier, but still we await that opening goal a little bit longer here at Petty's Reserve. There's a little bit of drizzle here as well. A bit of a, a weird weather day as we start to get into April, get a few of those where it's not necessarily cold, but it's not necessarily warm either, and it's just typical Melbourne weather it seems at this point in the year. See if those conditions do change as the game wears on as Zamoranis' raking ball finds Ramirez. Back pedals to Volgaris. Georgiopoulos. The first time this year that Manningham are playing at home and it's not stinking hot really. It's just to sum it up bluntly, I mean the first three games this year it's been very warm when Dandy Thunder, South Melbourne and Avondale have come here and one thing is we know, Mark, we're, it may be warm for us out here, but when you're on the synthetic and it's hot, you feel it even more. Yeah, that, that would have been another advantage for them. Though. You know, they would have trained all, all pre-season in the heat on, on the synthetic, so they would have been acclimatised to it. As we were talking before the game, Nick, you, know, you can't underestimate the kickoff times in this competition either. You know, Knights rarely play during the day. They're used to night games, so, you know, people... People don't really look at that. You know, you have to change your whole routine, what you're doing in the morning, the meals you eat. You know, you're used to a set routine and then you come on a Saturday 3 o'clock. You have to change everything up. Here's Semi. Find some space, Tommy Semi. That was a stinging effort there. And just over for a goal kick. But that's the danger that Tommy Semi poses. He can create something out of nothing. Yeah, he's, he's been doing that uh, the last couple of weeks or the nights. You know, they've... Uh, when they've been struggling to create chances, Tommy Semi's just gone on a run and used his power and that, that stinging shot that he's got to find the back of the net and get him out of jail. The PNG international, Tommy Semi, coming across from Altona Magic in the off-season. So a few former Altona Magic attackers lining up for both teams. 
Of course, Altona in action as we speak against Avondale down at Avenger Park. So if you're at home and make sure you don't turn us off completely, but go the dual screen if that's your fancy. And down in Geelong as well, North Geelong Warriors against Preston Lions in VPL 1. So plenty of action right across the state in NPL and VPL football. Franich finds Saki. Knights looking to build again. Corey Sewell. Semi plays the one-two with Sewell. He's looking to get forward here. Sewell rides the challenge of Georgiopoulos. Plays it back to Semi. Good pass out wide there to Saki. Oh, cheeky nutmeg there from Saki to get around Harding. Well defended there by Manningham to force them back and out of those crossing positions, but well defended there from Harding to bring Saki to ground and win back the ball. Carter, lovely flick over the top to Volgaris. Back to Carter. The pressure there from Albano and throw in there for Manningham. So the Knights have targeted something down the left-hand side of Manningham. All their attacks are coming down their uh, attacking right-hand side with with Sewell overlapping and cutting in, and then Thomas Semi going out wide, Evan Saki coming out wide then. Everson. Carter. Ramirez. Plays it into the area. Harding was waiting for it. Good touch there from White. Here is Semi. Plays it back in board to White. Skips around Carter. Castiello does well. Calls for a handball there as Jack Morton controlled that one. Safe Saki, the brother of former Melbourne City midfielder Hamza, came across quite late in the window, but seen some good signs from him so far, Mark. He scored a, a great goal against Avondale. It took a bit of time for him to work his way into the starting lineup, but so far so good from, from the Frenchman. Yeah, 100%. You know, they obviously re- brought him in late and replaced um, Nepa Messino, who'd done the, the whole preseason and was there at the practice game that they played against the O'Connor Knights where they, they gave him a trial and he scored two absolute bangers that day and was enough to um, convince Ben Siru to sign him over Nepo Messino. And, you know, he's slowly worked his way in and you know, they've shifted him from out wide to a, to a number 10 position now. So I you know he's got very limited English as well, so it's a bit hard to communicate with his teammates, but he is finding his feet. Ramirez out wide to Carter in a crossing position here. Cuts inside Carter in it. Uh, coming together there as the ball fed in towards Theodorakopoulos. And his shot is blocked by Franjic and out for a corner. It was well played to get that ball out of a bit of a sticky situation. And Theodorakopoulos, that was goal bound and not a bad effort again there for Manningham. Jeez, and Knights just fell asleep there for a second. Steve White, you know, turning his back to ask for a free kick for handball. It's very unlike. Steve White, someone of his experience, not to play the whistle. They got away with that one. Theodorakopoulos, ball in towards the near post. Carter with the flicked effort and wins another corner. Theodorakopoulos again whips it in. Castiello gets ahead to it. It's humped on its way and it's in. Junior Carter. Manningham once again take the lead here at Petty's Reserve. And Carter with his first goal of the season. And the Blues, they huff, they puff, but finally they do have an opener here. Well, I don't know how many warning uh, shots the Knights wanted, but, uh, you know, the danger signs were there. And, you know, there are a couple of corners there. They just scuffed away. You need to be more more forceful when you're defending your box like that. Just so, so easy for Manningham. Great save by Chris Oldfield, but again, no no defenders there to follow up and and help him out and clear the ball away. It was just a sea of blue and someone just waiting to tap it in. First goal in the top flight for Junior Carter. It has been so good for Manningham. Even going back to last season, their promotion winning campaign, he was just key for them. Melbourne Knights looking to respond quickly straight from the kickoff as now Corey Sewell feeds it out wide to Semi. Looking for Sewell again, and there is Carter getting back, and he makes a strong challenge and wins the goal kick. Junior Carter, a couple of weeks ago against St Albans, missed a great opportunity which would have 
snatched a point for the Blues in second half stoppage time, but made no mistake this time. But did see from the set piece, Castiello getting that header on goal and Carter was not going to be denied from close range. Manningham now for the third successive game at home, Mark. They've taken the lead first. We saw what happened against South Melbourne. They they led and then they surrendered that two-goal lead within, a, within minutes. But against Avondale, it seems like they learned from their lessons and they were able to kick ahead and win that game 3-0, which, as you said at the top of the broadcast, Mark, not many teams have, you know, I guess can, can say that really in the last few years of Victorian football or Australian football for that matter. Well, really, only South Melbourne was able to do that at yeah. Lakeside um, last season. So they, they do have a bit of quality about a Manningham. They, you know, for a team that's come up, you can see they've got a lot of confidence. They're, they're not scared. You know, a lot of teams, they would have seen um, South Melbourne, Avondale and Knights as their home games and you know, would have panicked a, a little bit and, and gone into their shell. But, you know, it looks like Manningham's embraced it and are uh, happy to take the game on. Bramwell. Looking for Albano. It's not a bad ball in there from Bramwell, but Zamoranis getting out and collecting that before Albano could collect. One thing that noticed that Manningham did really well is that obviously George Karkaletsis very wedded early in the season to playing a almost very attacking sort of possession-based style, trying to play through teams, playing out from the back, and it would invite a lot of pressure. It's something that did happen a lot against South Melbourne and made them pay, but Last time they were here, they, it seems like they learned from that. They Teams telegraphed what they were going to do, and they opted against that and tried to play maybe a little bit more defensive, and it worked to a T when they, when they had that advantage. So fascinating to see if they can do it yet again, but they have been so good at home. And, Mark, it only took about four or five wins last season to survive in this competition, and with only one team going down and Mullen City at the moment still without a point to start this season... Manningham win again today and have nine points on the board. You'd think they are all but, I wouldn't want to say all but safe, but, you know, they'd have at least, they're probably almost two-thirds of the way there. Yeah, this is still, long, still a long way to go, but from, you know, what we've seen so far, now this is where the season really starts to kick on after that first round of cup games. Um, you'd say they've got enough quality in their side to, to stay up and be more than competitive this season. Well, they win this game, and before Moreland City kick a ball in anger tonight, they will be nine points clear if they can hang on to this, and they'll be backing themselves to, to survive in this competition. And, I mean, last year their promotion really came from nowhere. With about five weeks to go, they were, I wouldn't say they were nowhere near it, but they were behind the likes of Western United and Kingston City, and then as those sides failed to get results... It, Basically, was a Stephen Bradbury effort in the end there from Manningham to pinch that second promotion spot. Yeah, well, there was uh, there's an esteemed podcast going around, Nick, that uh, didn't mention Manningham once in the in the promotion race, um, but they yeah they did come from nowhere, and you know credit to them, you know they did what they had to do, got the results, and and here they are playing against the Knights. Bramwell on goal, and it's saved by Zamoranis. A bit better there from Melbourne Knights. Despite being behind, they have had chances, but just haven't really been able to really test Samaritas. A lot of those efforts have either been over the bar or straight at him. So the radar off a little bit for Melbourne Knights, and we saw that against Avondale a few weeks ago, that further this game stays 1-0, the more comfortable uh, Manningham can sort of get into their shape and see this result out. So we'll see what Melbourne Knights can do to counteract this start. But it is interesting, Mark, I mean... The second, to, well, the second last round of the season last year in MPL two, Western United were only a couple of minutes away from promotion. They were leading against Northcote at John Kane Reserve, and if they'd won that game, they would have gone up. But a late goal from Northcote meant that ended as a draw, and then Manningham got the win, and then it set up perfectly for the final day where Manningham's noisy neighbours down at the Venator Club did them a favour by beating them, by beating Western United. Then Manningham just handled business here at Petty's Reserve, and really from out of nowhere. They were able to claim that second promotion spot alongside Dandenong City. And to their credit, they didn't will to when the pressure came. So that's what you need in those promotion races. And we've seen it time and time again from the, the, the second tier in Victorian football in particular. I think back a couple of years ago when Moreland City were locked with Pasco Vale and Brunswick Juventus for that second promotion spot as the boys looped over the top and Zamoranis collects. 
Uh, you do need a keeper cool head in those games, and it's so hard to not only stay in this position once you're up, but actually just to get here in the first place. MPL 2 is such a difficult league. 100%. You know, it's, and it's, it does uh, prepare you well to come up to the top flight as well, you know, in the, in the crucial moments where you need to keep a level head. Um, you know, you've been there and done that in MPL 2. And credit to Manningham. You'd much rather see a club like Manningham come up and, and enjoy the taste of top flight football. You know, a good mate of mine is the coach of uh, Wesley United, Diogo Ferreira, but uh, you might try to see Manningham get promoted in a A-League Academy side, if we're honest. It's been a funny old start to the season for Western United's Academy team. They lost their first few games of the season, but have since rallied a little bit. They absolutely battered George Cross before the, before the break, down at the first ever... MPL slash VPL game at, down at Ironbark Fields in Tarnate. Yeah, on the back pitch. Yes. It's a bit of conjecture about that online, but that's probably a conversation for another day. Old Fields switching out to that right-hand side to Saul and Tavella to ball out for a throw. He's white. Saki driving forward from deep. Albano receives in some space. Castiello with a strong challenge. And again, Tack Peters out there for Melbourne Knights. They do well to win it back through Werndl. Here's Albano and Georgeopoulos. Good tracking. Let's nullify that attack. But a bit of a, a better run here from Melbourne Knights. But when they've been able to get in those areas, nothing has really tested Zamoranis. Franjic, strong challenge by Carter. Here's Harding, Everson, looking to feed the ball back towards Harding, but just a bit too much on it, and Oldfield's there to collect. The big difference in the opening half an hour here is you know, the, the Manningham players want to get on the ball. They're rotating movement. You know, they're giving 100%. The nice place looks so flat, and... The, to be honest, some of them look like they don't even want to be out on the pitch, Nick. They're just going through the motions. Cheap turnovers, five-metre passes that aren't hitting the targets. Again, you know, it's, we go back to the, the kick-off time and, and uh, the venue and stuff. It, it can unsettle the team massively. Which is no excuse, you know. You need to be, you need to be prepared for... for the league fixtures that, that you're playing. It was a nine-day turnaround between games for Melbourne Knights. They played on the Thursday of that Easter long weekend and Manningham were in action on Saturday. But still, as you mentioned, Mark, it, when you're not playing on your usual Friday time slot, even if you're away, an away team, you know how many teams do play Friday night football, even Saturday night football, it, it, it can throw you off. It, it changes your entire schedule during the week with training and preparing so I wonder if maybe that's having a little bit of an impact for Manningham it's just business as usual play Saturday, last Saturday back in action again this Saturday and that's why we've seen Manningham being inconsistent when they're, they're playing away from home not just the pitch it's the mm. kickoff time to them as well Manningham still yet to get a point away from home this season all of their six points coming here at Petty's Reserve Werndl out wide to Albano Back to Werndl, strong touch there, and it's back out towards Bramwell. Nods it down, Morton. Here is Bramwell. Saki. Now Saul. A crossing position here. Said opts to go back to Saki. Cuts inside. And he get onto his left there, and he feeds it to Albano. Finds some space there just inside the area. Took a slip at an unfortunate time. And again, another attack goes to naught there for Melbourne Knights, but they'll get another opportunity here. Albano whips it in. Tavella got ahead to it to clear it away, but White collects. A bit of a, a lapse in concentration there from Jose Ramirez. And the flag is up for offside against Albano, but... Perhaps a touch fortunate there, the Manningham midfield. I think it was Ramirez just just for a second, probably didn't even know that the player was ghosting in behind him. And in the end, the Manningham defence can breathe a sigh of relief. And just a heavy touch there from Steve White. 
brought it down like his uh, usual silky self would have uh, been able to line one up there. It's about Manningham's road form. They've had a... You know, it's a boy at the top there from Everson looking for Harding and Oldfield collects. Again, just... <laughs> Another lapse in concentration now, both ends, but Melbourne Knights need to be so careful with the speed of Harding, what he can do when he gets in behind. But just going back to the previous point about Manningham's road form, they've not only lost away from home, but they've lost in big margins and something that certainly they're going to have to keep an eye on as this season goes on. As Semi getting forward, whips it in, Volgaris nods it away. Albano keeps it alive. Has support alongside him, but opts to go himself here. Gian Albano gets in a shooting position, feeds it to Werndl, takes a deflection. The ball goes out for a corner. We'll see how Manningham can deal from this set piece. The defence has been a bit of an issue this year, despite keeping that clean sheet against Avondale. Yeah, you can see him starting to backpedal a little bit there, Nick. You, you need to get on the front foot. You can't let players run at you like that. A little spell here from the Knights as the ball is whipped into the near post. Headed straight up into the air there by Georgiopoulos. Castiello helps it on its way out to Saki with the volley. Just flashes wide. And safe Saki. He can create something out of nothing. You don't want to give him even a second on the edge of the box. So just about 10... Or so minutes remaining in this first half. Still 1-0 to Manningham. Junior Carter with the goal, which separates the two sides. Georgiopoulos. Saul. Semi. Flicks it straight into a Manningham player. And Theodore Copoulos can now kickstart this attack here for the Blues. Good touch there from Georgiopoulos to get around his man in Morton and no call for the free kick. He stopped. He was expecting it from Ross Clark, but play on's the call. And now Melbourne Knights can break. Here's Albano. Feeding it centrally and Carter's there to intercept and Harding coming well back from an offside position. And the flag is up, but just a little bit of confusion there, but... As the old saying goes, Mark, just going to play the whistle in those moments that Manningham almost made to pay. Yeah, 100%. You know, it did look like a clear foul, to be honest, but if the ref doesn't call it, doesn't call it. Saki. Albano. White. Looking to feed it through, and that rolls all the way to Zamoranis, who's looking to go direct and go quickly to Everson. Carrigan. Good ball to Werndl. This pass just behind Bramwell. White turns it over. Ramirez feeds it over the top for Everson, but Carrigan as well. Strong challenge there from Morton. Did well to win that ball. It was in a very dangerous area. It's a great challenge from Morton. The other couple sort of been their way then. Everson comes deep to receive it. Seen him do this so many times throughout his career. He almost acts like an extra number 10 as Georgiopoulos hits it. And a good save from Oldfield. Just palms it away and out for a throw-in. And you can see those players coming from a mile away, Mark, when Everson drops deep and everyone else gets forward and he's able to drag defenders out. Those moments can happen. So a number of times so far this afternoon as well, Nick. You'd think, you know, after the first couple of times he'd be more aware of it, but they keep getting sucked out and creating that space for the midfielders to run onto. Great save by Oldfield. Strong hands. And you see most goalkeepers spill that. It's gone out for a throw in how strong those hands were. Castiello, strong touch and a big yeah, challenge there on Bramwell. He's in trouble. And a yellow card awarded second. there from Ross Clark. But as you said, Mark, he might be a touch fortunate. They actually, it's a second yellow for Alex Castiello. I stand corrected. And his afternoon comes to an end. And Manningham are down to 10. They're in the lead. But right now, they're down a man. And that challenge there from Alex Castiello sees his afternoon come to a premature end. 
Oh, that is such a pointless, pointless second yellow card. And that's the long, high, hefted ball from Tommy Semi going nowhere. No one around him. Uh, Castiello and just a heavy touch. You know, got that. Got a booking for 10 minutes earlier, Nick, for a similar challenge, big challenge on Bramwell. You know, let's... You're a newly promoted side, 1-0 up at home. You need to have more experience than that. Castillo is probably the most experienced player in the squ squad as well. Well, let's see how Manningham react to this. Down to 10 and Alex Castiello's afternoon coming to an end. What can Melbourne Knights do here? Because they're behind, but they do have this numerical advantage and they're going to have it for the next 50-odd minutes. Franjic. Out to Sewell. Sewell again. Cuts inside. Corey Sewell looking to get onto his left. Here's Semi. Creates a little bit of extra space for himself, but just blue shirts everywhere. Nine plays back behind the ball as Carter looking to break in transition. And a big challenge there from Bramwell to get back. Well played there from the Melbourne Knights, number nine, getting back to put the challenge on Carter. No changes yet from George Karkaletsis to alter their back line. Said Carter just coming in board as Semi wins it and puts it straight at Zamoranis. There were calls for a foul. They went unrewarded. And Tommy Semi just putting that effort straight at Zamoranis there. Probably should have done better. He should have. You know, the, the goal gaping at him there. Great save in the end, but Jesus hit it straight at him. Either side of the keeper, it's, it's one all. Jeez, Knight's been handed a big lifeline in this one. What can Manningham do back the other way? When they did go down to 10 against St Albans, they were still able to get themselves a goal in that game through Harding and put a lot of pressure on St Albans. But of course, they were chasing the game instead of defending as Volgaris goes to ground. And a free kick against Jack Morton. In a dangerous position here for the Blues. Gee, you know, they'd love to pinch one just before the break. Give the Manningham coaching staff some time to reassess. But how long does he leave it until he, he does reshuffle that defence properly? If it was me, I'd be taking a, a forward off and, and putting a, a recognised defensive player on. Well, Junior Carter's slotted in as that makeshift centre back alongside Dower Cole for the time being but be curious if George Karkaletsis or if and when he does make that move Owen Dufton on the bench who can slot in as a defender but he's nominally a fullback so might have to be a little bit of alterations as Theodore Acopolis whips it in, Franjic got his head to it and it's helped on its way there by Carrigan as well on the bench for Manningham James Twintus, Tom Golding, Owen's brother Reese. Ali Turgut and backup goalkeeper Claudio Sicora. So no real notable names that can sort of slot in as that centre-back option. They're already without Daniel Scopoletti, who is missing today. He was away last week and got some minutes in the reserves to get himself ready after not training this week. But should be back next week for their game away from home against Moreland City, which that shapes up as a really big game when you look at the tail of the table, especially if this result stays the same and if Moreland City don't turn around their form, Manningham could, I don't want to say all but seal survival, but if everything goes right for them, they could be 12 points clear by the end of next week. Yeah, that's a massive game next week. You know, Moreland, yet to get a point, they'll be looking at that one to get a result as well. Saw so whips it in. A Cole got ahead to, out to Saki. Here's Wernal. Albano whips it in towards the back post, gets past Semi. Tavella got ahead to it. Out here to White. Feeds it in board. Bramwell with the yeah. effort. Yeah. Melbourne Knights are level. What up, it was coming. It was a good spell there from the Knights. And Kieran Bramwell, with his third goal of the season, brings the scores level on the brink of half time. Yeah, it's a great finish from Bramwell. You can't allow. A striker to have that much time inside the box. One, to, to receive the ball the way he did. No pressure applied to him. Great finish in the end. But uh, should never have been able to get a shot off in that situation. 
That's where you, you would have thought Manningham would have made a change and brought a, a centre back on. Absolutely lasered it into the bottom corner, Kieran Bramwell, his second season at Melbourne Knights. Player who has shown in patches the potential that he does have, but still yet to see him really explode in MPL Victoria as Semi feeds it out wide to Sewell. Whips it in, takes a deflection. Semi just couldn't get a touch on it. And Ramirez clears it away. Manningham, you get a sense that they're going to have to batten down the hatches in these next few minutes in the hope that they can at least go into the Sheds level. Yeah, I feel like they've just gone into their shell since the red card. You know, Backpedalling and, and sitting way too deep, allowing the Knights to just get in, inside the box too easy. We saw obviously against South Melbourne a few weeks ago when Manningham led and how quickly that lead dissipated. And that was when they were up by two and had 11 plays on the field. They were down by, they were down 3-2 at the break. So it just shows how quickly things can change in a game of football. Well, that's why you'd like to think they learned from that game and, you know, just... You'd hope so. You know, they need to settle, settle things down for the next couple of minutes, get to halftime, one all, reassess things then. And the Knights get another one before the break. It's going to be a very, very long road back in the next 45. Wendell. Albano. Here's Morton. Semi, poor touch there, and it's turned over, and Robert Harding just rushed it for a second there and just wanted to play it direct to Ben Everson, but probably should have just taken a breath there for a second because he probably could have just gone forward and maybe taken some territory, but in the end, play continues. They're coming together, but the ball did go out of bounds, and it's a throw in to Manningham. So we're talking about Nick, you know, panicking in those situations. Harding needs to, you know, keep a level head, retain possession, you know, just knock it, knock it back to the Knights and just invite more pressure on yourself for the next few minutes. Two minutes of added time here at Petty's Reserve. Scores still 1-1. Junior Carter with the opener for Manningham and then red card for Alice Castiello sending Manningham down to 10 and then... Goal from Kieran Bramwell has the scores level, but maybe might be another chance for the Knights before the break. Carter oh, played with fire there, but did well to skip around Saki. Theodore Acopolis, good touch. Skips around Semi and looks in board. He's happy to slow things down here a little bit, Manningham. Carter bombing forward. Seems like him and Georgeopolis are almost rotating as... That centre-back partner for the time being. Ramirez does well to get back and put Albano under some pressure. So maybe one last chance before the break here for the Knights. Sewell over the top for Semi. Sets a foot race here for him. A Cole getting back. Semi whips it in towards the back post. Volgaris. His clearance was an awkward one and it's out for a corner. So one more chance before the break here for Melbourne Knights. From this set piece, danger signs here for the home side who are down to 10 and the last thing they need is to go behind here. If I'm Ben Everson, I wouldn't be standing on the halfway line. No. I would be in that box defending for, our, for your life. Ball whipped into a dangerous position. Frunic waiting for it at the back post and Zamoranis collects just before Semi could get on the end of it. Well, that's the end of the first half here at Petty's Reserve. It is 1-1. Manningham opening the scoring through Junior Carter. In the home side, the early advantage. And then a red card. Alex Castiello saw the home side go down to 10. And Melbourne Knights, after a, a period of pressure, got their equaliser through Kieran Bramwell. And right now, as we head into the Sheds, Mark, the scores are 1-1. Your observations here from this game. Yeah, for Manningham with a better side until the red card and Knights work their way back into it, given a lifeline. Now, it's going to be up to Manningham's mentality. How do they approach it in the next 45? Do they just sit off and hope for the best or do they just continue the way they were playing before they got the red card with the confidence that they had? Um, if, if, if it was me, I would uh, go for the latter and, and just play with confidence. You know, if you sit off and, and, and backpedal, you're going to concede a goal at some point. You know, they need to take the game on and, and hopefully they make those 
adjustments at half time and it's a, it's a competitive second half. It'll be fascinating to see what both coaches do, particularly George Karkaletsis at the break as they look to potentially just hang on and get something from this game or maybe go on and steal what would be an unlikely win despite their good start to this game. Down a player here against a, a very good Melbourne Knights team will be looking to end their two-game losing streak. We'll be back in around 15 minutes' time here from Penny's Reserve. Don't go anywhere on the NPL Victoria YouTube channel. We'll be back in just a sec with the scores here. Manningham 1, Melbourne Knights 1.
Welcome back to Petty's Reserve. This NPL Victoria clash here between Manningham and Melbourne Knights. Score is 1-1 between the two teams. Manningham opening the scoring thanks to Junior Carter for Melbourne Knights. Pulled one back thanks to a Kieran Bramwell strike. But in between then, a flashpoint moment. Alex Castiello sent off, which has Manningham down to 10 players. But they have made a half-time substitution. It looks like it is going to be Owen Dufton to come on here for the Blues. And it's going to be Christos Theodorakopoulos whose afternoon comes to an end. So a defensive change in order to potentially just preserve the points or structure them up a little bit better defensively. As this second half gets ready to get underway, Nick Tabano and Mark Ivkovic here to take you through all the action. Mark, an expected substitution there from the Blues. Yeah, we, you know, we were calling for it before Knights scored. Um, still a big player to take out. Uh, you know, Theodore Coppolis is... He's one of the main players at, at Manningham, but he had yeah, a little bit of a quiet first half, didn't he? So probably makes sense to make make that move. Now hopefully Manningham come out with the with the right mentality in the second half. Manningham have already turned it over. Melbourne Knights on the attack early through Albano. Carter getting across and pickpocketing the ball as Harding out wide here to Ben Everson. Harding making the run, but he was straying offside there. Manningham in there. Baby blue home kits kicking from left to right. Melbourne Knights in their red kits going from right to left. Mind if Melbourne Knights win this game. They'll be a point behind sixth place Dandenong City who leapt Port Melbourne on the standings last night with a late Late goal from Tom Yanakopoulos helping them in that one-all draw against Green Gully while Port Melbourne fell to a 3-0 loss against Oakley Cannons. So a win for Melbourne Knights puts them right back in the hunt for a spot inside the top six as Semi wins the free kick. I'm sure you're aware, Nick, that I'm the number one ticket holder of the Tom Yanakopoulos uh, fan club. So I'm Very well aware of that one, Mark. I was celebrating hard last night in that 96-minute <laughs> uh, equaliser. What a hit it was as well. Yeah. Screamer. Certainly a player to watch for the remainder of the season down at Frank Hollihan Soccer Complex. He's a unbelievable player who's come across from South Australia. But now, as we turn our focus back here, Melbourne Knights have an opportunity to put this Manningham defence under some pressure from this set piece. White floats it in, headed away there by Georgeopolis. Okay, for the Knights here in the second half, uh, Nick is just patience, you know, retain possession, work it from side to side, and uh, they're going to get their chances and just need to take them when they get them. Might be a chance here through Semi, but. Lost possession, and Carter maybe just try and do a bit too much, and Semi putting them under some pressure here. Bramwell feeds it out wide to Albano. Cuts inside, still going. Well defended by Volgaris. Held his ground well, but Albano wins it back. Whips it in. A call with an important intervention there, and now a chance for Manningham to break back the other way through Ramirez. And his pass is picked off by Ivan Franjic. And here come Melbourne Knights again. This game has really opened up here through... Was Saki, whose cross goes out of bounds for a corner. For Manningham, they just need to clear their lines. Nick and Carter, you can't you can't make mistakes like that. You don't want to cop a soft goal where you know you could have done better. Saul is tempted to shoot there, Corey Saul. We know he's got it in his locker and he's got a chance again. And Dufton gets across. Franjic. Ball whipped in to a dangerous position. Semi's header. Back out to that far side. Saki. Patient there from Saki. Hits it and it's straight at Zamoranis. And Manningham looking to go quickly again. Back the other way. Carter feeds it centrally. But again, just too stretched here, Manningham. And Melbourne Knights easily picking that one off. Albano 
Turns it over. Georgopoulos. Skips around. Now a chance for Manningham in transition. Has Harding and Everson in support. Goes to Harding here on the right-hand side. Cuts inside here, Harding. Feeds Georgopoulos. Georgopoulos gets around Oldfield. And his effort comes off the bar. Well played there for Manningham. And they've still got plenty of quality going back the other way, Mark, despite their numerical disadvantage. Well, it's three against six there, Nick. You know, Melbourne Knights need to defend better in that situation. And Kerrigan's come across. Beaten so easily there by Harding. Just nowhere the Knights defence. It's probably gone the wrong way um, around the keeper. If he's gone to the, towards the penalty spot, probably would have beaten him. Big opportunity for Manningham, but geez, three against six. You've got the numbers. It was way too easy. They got carved open there. Albano now in some space. Knights going back the other way here through Albano, and his effort just goes through the palms of Zamoranis, and it stays alive. Semi. Has some power there from Tommy Semi, and his cross takes a deflection and out for a corner. Both teams with. Almost mirroring efforts. One back the other way from Georgiopoulos, which came off the crossbar from a tight angle. And Albano's going right through the hands of Zamoranis. Just sitting a little bit too deep, Manningham. I understand the man down and you need to defend your box. But just in the, um, the midfield just sitting on the edge of the penalty box, a little bit too deep. Ball whipped in. Zamoranis got a fist to it. Manningham can clear their lines through Ramirez. Everson is offside and it's helped here by Joseph Franich who just gave the linesman a bit of extra advice there. But Ben Everson was off on that occasion. It's going to be a big task for Everson and Harding to lead that attack now with, without the services of Theodore Coppolis out there who almost acts as that link man between the two. So you'd expect Ramirez and Georgiopoulos, they're going to be busting a gut to get forward and, and help out the attacking duo every time they look to break in transition. From a, a coaching perspective, Mark, I mean, going up playing against 10 players, there's a bit of chatter sometimes around. It's actually harder to attack against teams that do have 10 players. They do tend to sit back a little bit more, I guess. What is the name of the game in these situations. You spoke about patience. Is that just the key in these moments? Yeah, 100%. A lot of teams, you know, the game is played mostly in transition in NPL Victoria, so that's why it is a bit harder because the, when a team gets a player sent off, they do send, sit a lot deeper than they usually would. Um, so you don't get that many transitional moments. But the Knights, you know, especially with the way they played last year and a bulk of the squad is still there, uh, possession is, is the name of the game for them. So just move it side to side and you slowly chip away, frustrate your opponent and the opportunities will come. Albano has support from Werndl. Feeds White. Breaking ball out to Semi. Good first touch there. Out now to Bramwell. He hits it on goal. Not a bad effort from Kieran Bramwell. We spoke about that end being the, the end for the fantastic... And Kieran Bramwell right from the top locker with an absolute stunner. And Melbourne Knights have the lead shortly after half time. Jeez, that's a well taken goal, Nick. You know, we spoke about Manningham not uh, conceding a soft goal. Well, that's the kind of goal that you can't do much about. It's a great first touch, brought down well, and what a finish. That is absolutely brilliant from Kieran Bramwell. Up to now four goals this season. He has two today. And really, that came from nowhere. Caught us both off guard. It seemed like it was fizzing wide of the post. It even, I think, caught George Zamoranis off guard to an extent. But what a goal there from Kieran Bramwell. And Melbourne Knights now have the lead. And, well, the mountain was already quite steep for Manningham, even though that it was level. It's now just gotten that little bit more difficult now for the Blues. Down a goal, down a man, and Melbourne Knights flexing a little bit here. Great finish. You know, Bramer has been uh, pretty inconsistent in his time of the Knights, but needed to step up today, and he's really um, you know, delivered a performance that the, that the side needed. Just sizzled right across the face and just nestled perfectly in the corner there from Kieran Bramwell, who 
As you mentioned, Mark, inconsistency has sort of plagued him throughout his time at Melbourne Knights and a highly credentialed striker who has quite a few appearances at A-League level with Perth Glory. And when he's been able to find form, it's just not come consistently enough. But Manningham looking to break back the other way through Harding. Harding getting in behind the Melbourne Knights defence and his cross is blocked by White. Feeds it centrally. Georgiopoulos hits it, takes deflection off Carrigan and the ball's out for a corner. So a bit better there from Manningham. A good response after going a goal behind. Yeah, great response. I just think they need to throw maybe one more midfielder forward when they're attacking in those situations. They don't have to attack all the time, but on those um, transitional moments, just getting an extra number in there might make it a little bit easier for them to create a chance. Well, before they went down a man and they were leading, they were causing all sorts of problems going forward. So they do have it in their locker. Everson, they go with that short corner routine, which is quite peculiar considering that these chances aren't going to come every time. But what can they do from this play? Carter, Ramirez, feeds it back to Carter. Good little interplay. Carter, shots blocked, and it's cleared away there by Franjic. What looked to be that play just petering out for Manningham. They did well to at least fashion an effort on goal, but Knight's looking to break back the other way. Volgaris got a foot in there. Knights can settle again. Well play from Ramirez just to ghost across and pickpocket White. Feeds it centrally for Everson, but Franjic does well. Georgiopoulos out to Ramirez. This cross is blocked there by Werndl. And again, communication there from the Melbourne Knights defence. Just calling for Steve White just to be a little bit more switched on in those moments because... It's almost uncharacteristic from Steve White to be pickpocketed in those areas. Yeah, you don't see that too often. Just going back to that short corner, Nick. Um, big short corner critic. Can't stand them. And, you know, you've, you've scored your goal, uh, only goal of the game from a corner. So why would, you, why would you play a short corner when you're down to 10 men? You've got the tall timber. You've got the strength. You've already scored one this afternoon. Doesn't make any sense to me. Although it doesn't make any sense why any team plays a short mm. corner, to be honest. But um. there's the Marka Ivkovic manifesto there. No more short corners in NPL Victoria as Albano getting forward down the left. Whips it in towards the back post, and Bramwell was waiting for it. He's on a hat trick. Gotta be massive for his confidence if he's able to find another. Two's already good enough, but if he can get a hat trick out of this game, a semi just knocks it ahead of him and. Not sure if that ball was already out of bounds, but the system referee believes it was still in, and his cross is deflected out for a corner by a Cole. I do wonder if Knights heed your advice here, Mark, and maybe just this has gone straight in the mixer instead. Well, look, you know, if we look through the history of football, Nick, maybe one out of 100 ends up working from a short corner. <laughs> maybe 30 out of 100 from a direct corner will work, so I am a betting man. And um, I'll be putting my money on a direct corner over a short corner all day, every day. <laughs> and they've gone short. <laughs> and it, Well, they will get a retake here as Owen Dufton went to crowd inside the box. So <laughs> the message came out <laughs> to try and go for something straight off the, the training grounds. But I think this time this one might be a little bit more direct because I think if it doesn't come off the first time and you get a chance at a retake, you're not going down that same path. White whips it in towards the near post and Georgiopoulos is there to clear it away. Significance of this result for Melbourne Knights, as we spoke about it keeps them in touch and closes that gap with those teams battling for finals this year. For Manningham, though, a loss, it really opens the door for the sides below them to close the gap later on tonight. We know Altona's already down 2-0, so that does certainly work in Manningham's favour. Morton, fed by Albano, whips it into the back post, and it includes everyone, and Saki was waiting for it, but it comes out to, to Semi. Saki got it out from underneath him, and Carter goes to ground, and a free kick's awarded there to Manningham. Well, this is where the Knights need to put their foot down and, and flex a little bit, Nick. You know, you've got the man advantage. You've got the the one goal lead. And so Manningham is going to start opening up a little bit now that they're chasing the game and, and not defending a result. You know, just get some confidence into your forward line. 
get your goal difference back up as well. Manningham's goal difference is currently minus 10 on the live ladder. They've conceded 20 goals this season, which is one more than Altona. They have the worst defensive record in the competition. Of course, Altona at the moment down 2-0 against Avondale at Adventure Park at halftime in that game. Kerr Kerr and Stefan Zini getting on the scoreboard. And down the highway in Geelong, Preston Lions flexing against North Geelong Warriors, leading 4-1, which I'm sure... So win that Preston need as Semi getting in behind down on that right-hand side. He whips it in, and Albano's waiting for it. But somehow he didn't put the effort on target. The goal at his mercy, and John Albano somehow misses, and now Manningham looking to break back the other way. Everson backing himself here against Franjic. Plays it short to Georgiopoulos. Carter receives in some space. Ramirez looking to play the one-two. It was an audacious pass, and Wendell can clear. But Melbourne Knights really should be leading 3-1 here, Mark. Keep going, keep going. It was harder to miss that than to score it. A little bit low in confidence, Albano. He's had a couple of those chances, but that easily the best of the lot. Here's Everson. Harding. Heavy touch, and Carrigan does well. But what an opportunity there for Melbourne Knights to really put this game out of reach. Albano, who this season has already got three goals to his name, but hasn't scored in his last couple of games. Last of those goals coming against Dandy City, where he scored a brace. But confidence player, Mark, who we know he's got goals in his locker, but God, that would have just been huge in the, the state of this game if they were able to make it 3-1. Maybe a chance here for the Knights, though. Saki, well defended by Tavella and Georgiopoulos to force him back. It is the risk for the Knights if they don't kill this game off. You know, Manningham can quite easily just go up the other end and, and pinch an equaliser. Well, they've got you know. the quality in transition that can cause all sorts of problems, and they are turning to their bench in just a sec. I see James Tuntas is warming up, and he's a, a very speedy player who... Despite only scoring one goal this season, he probably should have more to his name. Saki cuts inside, whips it in, and it's headed away by Volgaris. Still, though, this Manningham team has a lot of defending to do just to stay in this game and give themselves a chance at maybe getting something from it. Albano gets around Volgaris. Still going, Albano. Good save by Zamoranis. Semi at the back post, and he's... I don't know if that was a shot or a cross in the end, but that does go out for a throw-in. Uh, the shot Albano needed to do moments before. Well, it came out to semi at that back post and never just flashed right across the face and went out for a throw in. So substitution here from Manningham will be Rob Harding coming off and replaced here by James Tuntas. Tuntas who scored the third goal for Manningham in that win against Avondale, his only goal of the season. And Robert Harding... Had a very bright start to this game. Could have easily opened the scoring inside the first 15 seconds or so. He's off the field. Been coming into this game in some really good form, having scored in his last two league games, but his afternoon ends after just over an hour. Let's see what James Tuntas can do, though, because even though that one goal, which the goal he did score against Avondale, it was probably the hardest of all the goals that he has scored because it sort of just made its way through a sea of players and caught Thomas Manos off guard. But he missed some gimmies in some other games as well. Mine goes back to that game against Dandenong Thunder where he had a couple of great opportunities. So see if he can maybe make the most of his chances today. Is a free kick one there by Everson. Dufton taking it quickly and he's looking for Tuntas. All the experience with Ivan Franjic getting across and doing well, and he wins the free kick. And so it's just leaving a hand in there and dragging him to ground. A lot of experience in that Melbourne Knights defence. You'd think they should be able to amongst the likes of Ivan Franjic and Corey Sewell and Ben Carrigan and Chris Oldfield, who have all played at a very high level and have plenty of top flight experiences, uh, top flight appearances between them. They should be able to see this game out, but we've seen Manningham have been able to cause problems. It's a good challenge there from Jose Ramirez to win that ball off Saki. 
They've looked better the last five minutes. Manningham as well. They've stepped up their line. The the defensive line and midfield line has, has pushed up another five, ten yards. So it's allowed them to be a little bit more compact going forward. Semi looking for Albano, but Zamoranis collects. I mean, is it a is it a matter of is it too early to say? Is it a matter of losing this game, risking to lose this game, maybe three one to maybe try and get something from this game, or is it still too early? You, you're just trying to stay in it. Like, what's the the sort of messaging when you're down to ten in these moments, Mark? You, you want to start going for it now, Nick. You know, there's thirty minutes to go. You know, you can see that the opportunities are still there when you're going forward. Um, so you might as well just go for it. Ben Everson's looking to ask the question. Volgaris crashes in late, but that ball rolls all the way through to Oldfield. You know, the longer the game goes, the, the deeper Knights are going to sit and just um, defend the lead if it stays 2-1. So whilst the game's still in the balance, Manigan might as well just go for it. Does look like some movement as well on the Melbourne Knights bench. They are still yet to make a substitution. And I think that is Felipe Sanchez who's getting ready to come on. Ball fed over the top looking for Bramwell, but he's offside. And we're going to change as well for Manningham, their third of the game. And he's going to be Tommy Semi making way here for Melbourne Knights and replaced by Felipe Sanchez. Will be Ben Everson replaced here for Manningham. An interesting change here taking off Everson and coming on here in his place. I believe he's Tom Golding. Former Eastern Lions attacker coming on here for the final 25 odd minutes of this game. But Ben Everson, who, I think in a game like this, Mark, where someone who can just create a little bit of something out of nothing being taken off. Yeah, I'll, I would keep Everson on, even if he was on one leg, to be honest. You know that he can score a screamer as well. So, interesting move, but um, maybe he's, he's got a knock or something that we don't know about. When you think about the players that had to take off, either forced or unforced, when you think about the experience, Castiello sent off. You know, Robert Harding, who has been one of their best goal threats this season, off. Theodore Acopolis, off. Everson, off. In fact, the only other player in this team that has scored a goal that is on the field is only two of them, and that's Jose Ramirez and James Twintus. So they've taken off their three best attacking players from a, a goal-scoring output sort of point of view this season. So I wonder what George Karkaletsis is cooking. Of course, Junior Carter as well on who did open the scoring for Manningham. Tom Golding came across from Eastern Lions in the off-season. He does have goals in his locker, but still yet to open up his account for the Blues. So it'll be fascinating to see what he can do. If he can have his moment as this game wears on as a free kick's awarded here to Manningham. Sark has come out on, onto the right with Semi coming off and um, Sanchez going into the number 10 position now. Still 2-0 over at Avenger Park and down at Alco Park, North Geelong have pulled one back. So it's 4-2 to Preston. But the Warriors looking to put up a bit of a fight. Albano feeds Sanchez. Plays it out wide there for Bramwell, but he's offside. Felipe Sanchez, Mark, an interesting one because this is his second season back at Melbourne Knights. A couple of years ago at Pasco Valley, he had a really good season when they chased promotion, but Game time has not necessarily come in large amounts for Sanchez since coming back to Melbourne Knights. Yeah, that's where he made the wrong move going to Pasco Vale, in my opinion. He was breaking through into the senior squad the year before, and you know, I was still involved then um, when he departed. He was, you know, he would have played a lot of games. He was very impressive for the Knights the season before, and you know, obviously wanted that regular game time. And I know he, his um, personal one-on-one -on -one coach was was the coach at Pasco Vale, mm. but. I feel like if he stuck around that year, he would have got a lot more minutes and established himself as a NPL Victoria player, moving away and then coming back. It's kind of dropped down the pecking order a little bit, but he has been impressive every time he's come on for the Knights. Bramwell, great hold-up play to find Albano. He's been getting a lot of the ball in this second half. He cuts inside Albano, yeah. hits it on goal, and it's a good save in the end there by Zamoranis. Tuntus. Manningham conjure up. There's only one player ahead of him in Golding who sits in between a, a sea of red shirts. There's just nothing ahead of him every time that these Manningham players break. It's 
just not enough support and that's what happens when you're down 10 and coming up against the Melbourne Knights side who have that numerical advantage as Georgopoulos goes to ground and wins the free kick. Manningham still have options on the bench. They've got one more window remaining. Reece Stuffton and Ali Turgut, the only outfield players remaining they could turn to. Carter, Volgaris. He's got players in the middle where Cole's come up from the back and his cross is a poor one in the end and that's out for a goal kick. They're the moments, Nick. That's where you need to get the delivery right and get it in the mixer. When you've got Dower Cole, who towers over all those Melbourne Knights defenders. It's not a very tall Melbourne Knights defence. I mean, Ivan Franich is not a nominal centre-back, and Ben Carrigan isn't the tallest of centre-backs. So you've got someone like a Cole, as you said, you've got to make the most of it. Yeah, even, even just to get the ball out wide in that position, to get a, to get a good cross in, even those opportunities are going to be few and far between. Bramwell couldn't get there. Good challenge from Volgaris again. Still on the bench for Melbourne Knights is Tom Karlovich, John Mabok, Jacob Wiseman, the backup goalkeeper, and Juan Garcia Pulidio. One of the boys in the reserves in the other 23s who has made the leap today, getting his opportunity in the squad. Ramirez. Carter. Looking for Golding, and... Golding will get there. Got him behind Corey Sewell. Cuts inside Tom Golding. Has players in the middle. In fact, he looked for Tuntus. And maybe if he had that opportunity again there, Mark, he probably should have just had a shot. 100%. No one wanted it. No one made a run into the box. He just had a crack. Well, Tuntus and George Opolis and co. were just sort of waiting on the edge of the box, almost just expecting him to shoot, but perhaps just a little bit unselfish. And now a chance for Manningham again. Ramirez, Tuntus, the touch around Franjic, but Franjic does well. A little patch here from Manningham. Bramwell turned over to Valor with a strong challenge to win it back. And he's a bit worse for wear on that far side. Golding. Tuntus. Carter back to Golding. Going to feed it through, but just not in the same wavelength as his teammates there. And the ball goes out for a goal kick. So we can see Everson coming off. Struggling for that, that person up top to... You know, a focal point, someone to hold it up. I feel like Everson in that, that previous situation would have taken a shot. Look a little bit lost in that final third at the moment, Mark. Just seems like they haven't really got that focal point or someone who's just willing to take it on and, and have that effort, whether it is Everson, whether it's Theodore Acopolis, whether it's Harding. Yeah, panicking a little bit too much as well, second-guessing themselves. Just, just got to back yourself. Dufton. Strong challenge between him and Morton. Zamoranis is more out there for the throw. It's about 20 odd minutes remaining here at Petty's Reserve. Melbourne Knights in the lead. Kieran Bramwell at the double. Albano, great first touch. It's isolated here with Volgaris looking to get in around him, but Volgaris did well and didn't allow him. Find himself in a shooting position. White, now to Saki. A few step overs there and goes right at Tavella. Still going and again turned over a cold. Did well. Tavella as well just to hold his ground. Made me dizzy from all those step overs, isn't he? Yeah. Ramirez. Good challenge there from Golding and. Every time Manningham looked to break, it just falls over at a key point. Just lacking a little bit at the moment with that numerical disadvantage and some key players off the field. It's going to be a big effort for the Blues. Having said that, Nick, they're still in the game. You know, it's Absolutely. only one goal down. It just takes one moment of, of you know, Knights falling asleep or something special from Manningham. Ball there from Sanchez for Saki, who did well to make up for the poor first touch. Sul, Saki outside of the cross, ball to Albano! And he's just put it wide. And we've already seen one amazing goal at that end, and that one would have been right up there had that come off. What a cross. It's a 
a little bit uh, harder for Albano than some of his previous chances. Bit of a well, it's outside of the foot cross there from Safe Saki, and Albano just unable to get that one on target. As you said, Mark, it would have taken something quite spectacular to put that one into the back of the net, but we've already seen one great goal already from Kieran Bramwell, which is the difference between the two teams. Saki, again in a crossing position, but opts to play it centrally to Steve White, who has a paddock in the middle of the park free and opts to go short to Werndl. Werndl hits it, takes a deflection. The ball goes out for a corner. Tom Werndl, another one of those former Altona Magic players in action today. Part of that side that made the finals last year and bowed out in the elimination final against Oakley Cannons, but again, had to bide his time and wait for his opportunity, but making the most of it today. Yeah, I'm, I'm familiar position of our left back as well, but, you know, if it's an opportunity to get a spot in the starting 11, you take it. Set piece opportunity for the Knights. Ball whipped in towards the back post. Franich was waiting for it, but Cole got there first. Out for another corner. Ball played short. Saki. Franich. Whips it in. A Cole clears it away. Tuntus. Carrigan does well. Saki. Position across. Period of sustained pressure here from the Knights. A Cole does well again. And now a chance for Manningham to break back the other way through Ramirez. He goes to ground, but referee waves play on. Ross Clark unmoved in the middle of the park there. We saw there, you know, it was a chance to break. Not one player streaming forward for Manningham. Sanchez, Morton, White, Saki, and left to right here from Melbourne Knights. Ball whipped in towards the back post. Saul was waiting for it, but Volgaris did well. It's out for another corner. Jack Morton, you know, we question the decision of just not starting, but Morton's been uh, very good today. Very impressive performance from the number 18 for Melbourne Knights. So very limited uh, opportunities in the middle of the park as well since he's come to the Knights from um, Melbourne Victories. You know, been used primar primarily as a fullback. Ball whipped into the back post and Franich was waiting for it. And it comes out to Saki again. He's been getting a lot of the ball in those areas in the last few minutes. Cole doing very well to put Saki under some pressure, but he whips it in, almost does find Bramwell in the end, but foul is awarded. And it's going in Manningham's favour as a substitution now for Melbourne Knights. It is going to be the end of the game here for Kieran Bramwell. Actually, it looks like, sorry, it's been a bit of a mistaken identity there. They forgot to actually change the substitutes board there. <laughs> Mark, it's actually going to be Steve White, whose day comes to an end. Looks like here in Bramwell actually is going to come off. It's actually a triple change here from Melbourne Knights. Or double change, sorry. I thought Safe Saki was also coming off, but he's just having a quick call down. It's going to be John Mabok coming on here, as well as Anthony Giselle. Giselle! Sell on for Steve White and Mabok on for Kieran Bramwell. A double for Bramwell, a very impressive performance. Probably, you'd say, Mark, probably his best in Melbourne Knights colours since coming from Perth Glory. Yeah, one of his better performances. Two great goals, really. And especially the second one. And the first one was a great finish as well. Mm, he just needs to give those kind of performances week in, week out. So John Mabok... Scored a few weeks ago against St Albans. Good to see him getting an opportunity. A player who's come through the, the youth set up here at Melbourne Knights. Uh, this will go back to that in just a sec as Manningham are looking to get forward. Actually, John Mabok, Mark, tell us a little bit about him. I mean, we've seen him in bits and pieces throughout the last couple of seasons. Yeah, very raw talent. Obviously very, very pacey um and direct uh, by all reports is you know trains very well um very competitive in training great uh, finisher 
So he's slowly getting his opportunities at first team football. He's done well at, at youth level. Um, and we've seen when he when he comes on with his pace, just gives uh, opposition defences a headache with, with that pace in behind. Just needs to you know work work his way into the first team level and you know the first touch and stuff like that. Well, free kick opportunity here for Manningham. What can they do from this? A rare chance in this second half. Down a goal. They find an equaliser here. Georgopoulos whips it in, but it's met by Franjic. Carter mops up. Carter hits it, and it was always going wide. And it's out for a goal kick. A bit better there for Manningham, though, just being a bit more direct. Yeah, still the quality of that, that cross just isn't there today for Manningham. does look like they are getting ready to make a double substitution. It is going to be Reece Dufton and Ali Turgut coming on. So they're emptying the clip and trying to find a way back into this game. A call. Feeds it back to Zamoranis. Wendell got ahead to it. Carrigan. White. Corey Sewell with a long ball looking for Albano and he's seemingly timed his run well there. Brings it under control. Albano cuts inside, gets around Volgaris and Albano still going. Saved by Zamoranis and Sanchez's efforts cleared off the line. How have Melbourne Knights not added a third? It was a great save initially. Sanchez needs to score that follow-up effort though. Too casual. Knights really need to kill this game off. They're just keeping the door ajar for Manningham at the moment, and they've had a couple of really good opportunities to put this game beyond doubt. As you mentioned there, Mark, Felipe Sanchez had to put that either side of the defender, and that would be game over. Albano, again in some space. Still going, Albano. Gets around Volgaris, and he's cross. It's a poor one, and it's out for a goal kick. Just got caught underneath him there. As the substitution comes here for the Blues. Jose Ramirez to replace here by Ali Turgut. And it looks like it's going to be Marco Tavella, who's also going to be coming off here for Manningham. And it'll be Reese Dufton who comes on in his place. So both Dufton brothers on here for Manningham. Looks like Reese is going to play at left back and Owen in centre back. Georgiopoulos immediately put under pressure there by that Melbourne Knights midfield and it's turned over. Sewell again looking for Albano. Dufton does well to get back and feeds it to Zamoranis who just had to deal with that bit of awkward play but it seems like that's been a bit of a target really all game for Melbourne Knights. It seems like come out to Corey Sewell, the diag pass to Gian Albano and it's Caused all sorts of problems. Just they haven't been able to score one yet from it. Sewell cuts it back to Saki and this pass is a poor one and it's turned over. Yeah, Volgaris is going to have to get a neck and shoulder uh, massage after the game, I think. The amount of times he's had to turn his yes. head from those uh, diagonals. It's been a tough game for Nick Volgaris, but held his own so far. Werndl against Tuntus. Tuntus still going. Man, at least win a corner or something here, Manningham. He Feeds it back for Carter, and Sanchez did well. And now a chance for Melbourne Knights again to break. Dufton gets across at the, the right time to win that ball back. So, 82 and a bit minutes played here. Still the score reads 2-1, and Carter's pass is intercepted by Werndl. Watching the ground there with frustration there, the Japanese midfielder. Seems like his opening goal was an eternity ago, Mark, it, Seemed like at that point as well, Manningham were the, the team in control and looked like they were the ones that were odds on favourites to come away with all three points. Yeah, I think, you know, if it was 11 v 11, it would be a totally different game right now. But um, I think Castello will uh, look back and regret that, uh, that second challenge that he made. What was that? Still not, not to have made the hard work of it. Was that red card to Alex Castiello, which was the flashpoint moment of this game. And ever since then, it's been all Melbourne Knights. 
They equalised shortly after through Kieran Bramwell, and then Bramwell added a second to make it 2-1 and give the Knights the lead. There's still time for an equaliser, and Tuntas was making the run, but Turgut just ignored it there, and you could see the frustration from Tuntas because just opted against playing that ball. Just wonder when we're going to see Manningham start throwing some numbers forward and, and go for it. And the Knights are sitting off now. Well, you, may as well off. you may as well risk it, Mark. I mean, yes, they have conceded a lot of goals, and goal difference may be an important factor at the end of this season, but... I mean, funny for me to say this now. People could pull this up in, you know, the end of August when this season ends. But what is one goal, you know? Yeah. If it does come down to one goal, I do apologise to Manningham in that sense. But all dealing in hypotheticals for now as Carter wins the free kick. One point's uh, better than uh, one goal. Bit of a, a mix-up there as Carter looks to take that free kick quickly. And now a chance for the Blues to break. Twintus. Plays it short. Golding looking back for Tuntus. And Oldfield quick off his line. And seems like Tuntus left a foot in. And a bit of a coming together. Ivan Franjic now going to ground. And a bit of a coming together here between the Melbourne Knights defenders and the Manningham attackers. And Ross Clark just have to deal this one with this one for a second. And the yellow card awarded there to the Manningham attacker. Couldn't really pull out of that. Tuntus really, Oldfield's come come off his line, done well. Tuntus had every right to go for that ball. But again, no numbers in the box for Manningham in that in that moment. Tuntus, no options inside. Yeah. Well, if ever there was a quintessential yellow card, that's that that sort of just hits all the the markers there. Left the foot in, and you know probably. That's more of an act that you do when you're, you're trying to preserve game and waste some time, not chase a game. But anyways, play will continue. Two one the score. Melbourne Knights closing in on win number three for the season, and they'll be within just a point of Dandy City, who sit in sixth, and Port Melbourne who are in seventh, as they look to. Close the gap on the top six. Still early days to be talking about finals, but don't want to lose uh, lose pace on those sides who are in the top six or seven spots at the moment. Looks like Manningham has shifted to a back three now and put Volgaris in the middle of the park. This looks like both Duftons either side of Dower Cole and throwing a bit of caution into the wind, which is completely fair at this point here, Mark. You'd think that, as we spoke about, you've got to risk it. This has been a bit of a better patch here from Manningham as Reese Dufton takes the throw. Hold up play there from Turgut and he wins the corner. So an opportunity here for Manningham. Don't play it short. It's my words of advice. I reckon now they're going to play it short that you've said it. But I think that passing avenue has already been cut off. Golding was offering short, but instead this is probably going right into the middle. Ali Turgut to whip it in. Floats it into a telling area. Oldfield got a fist to it. Fulgaris chases it down. Mabok putting him under some pressure, and he wins the throw. So a good little patch here from Manningham, just locking it in there, attacking third. Fulgaris. Ball headed in. Border comes out. To, it was Georgopoulos waiting, and a great save from Oldfield. Golding's cross straight to Corey Sewell. And what a chance there for Manningham. They might get another here. Tuntus, Georgopoulos. Here's Reese Dufton. A call to Owen Dufton. Whips it in. His cross takes the flexion. It's out for a corner. But what a chance that was just before there for Manningham. Here's what a save from Chris Oldfield. Oh, again, Knights just not, not clearing their lines. Just leaving that door open for Manningham to get back into it. They've got to ride the momentum off that opportunity now. Manningham believe that they can get back into it. What a moment that was for Giannis Georgopoulos to give Manningham 
A late equaliser as Turgut puts it in, gets past Duff to Volgaris, gets ahead to it. And it's just over the bar. And out for another goal kick. Another nervous moment at the back there for Melbourne Knights. And it's a player down here. That might be... This is where they need to go for it. You know, they've had a big opportunity. Great save from Oldfield. Just uh, throw, throw um, the kitchen sick at the Knights now. Still wonder that. Yanni Georgiopoulos' chance, though, was really the one. If there was ever going to be the one chance that was going to fall to them, it was going to come from potentially a set piece. And it was there. The goal was at their mercy. But Chris Oldfield showing all his experience to get down and make that save. And what a moment that could be for Melbourne Knights. Carrigan sends it long. Albano. Oh, a touch just... Goes straight back in the path of Owen Dufton. Owen Dufton under some pressure there from Albana. Good little battle here, and they're still going. And now Jack Morton looking to go back the other way. Bit of words there between Albano and Dufton. As Morton out to Saki in some space, and he puts it over the bar. And the game was right there for Melbourne Knights to put it away. And Saki just kept his body up in the end there, and he puts it over the bar. As we've got three minutes of added time. Calls for a foul there against Carrigan. Go unrewarded. Sewell. To Saki. The Knights have had so many chances to put this game out of reach. But could this be the attack here? Saki. Giselle. I'm just happy to recycle possession back to Ben Carrigan. And the pressure there from Georgeopolis and... Had to be careful there. The Knights centre half. Sewell in a crossing position here. Whips it in. It's past Mabok. It finds Albano. Controls with his chest. Puts it on goal. It's saved by Zamoradis. And again, John Albano can't beat George Zamoradis. Can't buy a goal from Albano. There by Werndl. Sorry to cut you off there, Mark. As Albano again. He must be wondering if he's walked under a ladder or seen a black cat on the way in because he's just had a... A horribly, horribly unlucky day in front of goal. So he's had his chances, but very unlucky. Some great saves from Zamoranis. That last one was just a very awkward one. He just sort of thro threw his foot on it. As now Tuntus. What can he do from this play here? Feeds Golding, looking back for Tuntus. But it goes all the way through to Oldfield. Just need someone with the confidence to, to take a strike outside the box, Nick. Up next for Melbourne Knights, Heidelberg at home, Altona away, and then Oakley at home and Danny Thunder away. So a big stretch of games coming up for Melbourne Knights. A great test against Heidelberg, who won 6-0 last night against St. Albans. Well, Manningham, Moreland City away, then Hume and Dandy City at home in back-to-back -back games. Of course, been drawn against Altona City as well in the Doherty Cup, which is away from home, but maybe a chance here for the Blues. Turgut. Georgeopoulos. Tuntus. Still going, James Tuntus. Eyes up, Werndl. Great intervention there from the Knights defender. Franjic clears it away. And now Albano looking to set free Mabok as he's bursting down that left-hand side. Mabok up against the Cole. Plays it centrally to Sanchez. Sanchez still going. Out's that right-hand side. Saki. Cuts inside Saki. And he just slows play down and plays Giselle and happy to take some more seconds off the clock. That's experience right there, Nick. You know, most players in that situation would add a shot and uh, reset from a goal kick. Saki just keep possession, wind the clock down. Well, this might be the last chance here for Manningham. Volgaris switches it out looking for Golding, but Franjic does well. Here's Reese Dufton. Plays it centrally for Turgut. Touched straight back into the path of Albano, and he's turned it over. And now a chance for Melbourne Knights to break, but that's the full-time whistle. Melbourne Knights come from behind and claim three points here at Petty's Reserve. An extremely hard-fought contest between these two sides. And Knights, who were down early... Thanks to a goal from Junior Carter. 
But a red card to Alex Castiello turned this game on its head and gave a chance for Knights to get back into this contest. Kieran Bramwell equalised before the break and then a stunning second from Bramwell saw the Knights take the lead. Both sides, especially Manningham, had plenty of chances or a couple good ones towards the end to bring this game level. Melbourne Knights had plenty of chances to put this game out of reach. But in the end, it is Knights who come away with the three points and their third win of the 2024 season. Mark, your thoughts after this game? Yeah, it wasn't pretty, but three points is three points, Nick. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're not going to look back at the end of the season and uh, remember the, the performance. You just remember the points that you got. So Knights did enough, more than enough to win that game. And, um, you know, Manningham are lucky to, to go down to 10 men when they did. Um, you know, they'll look back at, and... and Wish they didn't get a player sent off, but they did. That's football, and the Knights walk away with the three points. Heartbreaking loss for Manningham, considering they were in the lead. They would see this again, and the two losses they've now had at home have been in the lead. They've given them up, and, of course, against South Melbourne, they were up, up by two. They had 11 players on the field that day, but sort of succumbed to the, the pressure of South Melbourne. But today, leading and then going down to 10 players and was always going to be difficult from there. But Melbourne Knights securing win number three of the year. They're back in the hunt for the top six, only a point behind Dandy City on the ladder, heading into that huge game against Heidelberg at Knight Stadium next Friday. Well, Manningham, massive game away at CV Smith Reserve next weekend against Moreland City. Side who currently sit bottom of the standings, zero points, but a win if they can get one next week, be huge for their chances of survival. But it's time for us to say goodbye here from Petty's Reserve. Final score here has been Manningham United 1, Melbourne Knights 2.